Bowman Rain here today working on the old 1988 Ford Ranger. We need to hopefully replace the valve cover gaskets here. I've uh, been having a significant issue with oil leaks here over this uh, past summer. Uh, normally between oil changes, I mean, it'll leak about, uh, oh, thank you, phone, just in time. Uh, it'll leak about a quart of oil between oil changes. Well, this past summer, everyone, um, I think it leaked more like five quarts oil. In fact, this last time around when it came time to change oil, I didn't even bother changing oil. Just put a new filter on it and called it good because uh, putting oil is in this thing at such a rate, it's uh, ridiculous. Um, I think most of it, everyone, is coming from the valve covers. So we're going to start there. Uh, it is also possibly coming from the oil pan as well. Uh, real quick story with this. Uh, with the oil pan here, oh, I don't know, that's probably maybe five years ago, everyone. I replaced the timing chain. Uh, and of course, to do that, you got to take the timing chain cover off. The timing chain cover sits on top of the oil pan, and there's a gasket between the timing chain and the oil pan. Uh, my intention was to, well, we'll just replace the oil pan gasket. Well, when it turns out in order to replace the oil pan gasket, or, well, actually, let me rephrase that. In order to get the oil pan off of this truck, you have to pull the motor, apparently. Uh, the cross members axle, front axles here on the truck, it, it's right above the oil pan, or right below the oil pan, I guess. Yeah, yeah the axles will be below the oil pan, right? So you cannot get the oil pan off this truck. Uh, so yeah, uh, unfortunately when we did the timing chain cover, damaged the oil pan gasket, kind of to be expected, right? Didn't think nothing of it. We'll just slap a new one on, right? Well, yeah, come find out, uh, putting a new oil pan gasket on this truck, everyone, is not as easy as it looks. However, I think most of the leaking everyone is coming from the valve covers, I think. Uh, basically for the last, uh, how long everyone, whenever I stop this truck, get out of the truck, there'll be just smoke peeling and i mean peeling out from underneath the hood here uh, i think what's happening oil is leaking from the valve cover gaskets onto the exhaust manifold in fact you can probably see it back there hopefully you can see that maybe let's see can you see that yeah hopefully you can see that right right there it is uh coming out of the valve covers there leaking on the headers there and uh just basically burning off not a pleasant smell uh, in fact, it's gotten so bad you can smell it going down the road, everyone. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely looking forward to doing this job, shall we say. One thing I want to note, too, uh, real quick before we get started, everyone, uh, I replaced these valve cover gaskets, I don't know, maybe five years or so ago, somewhere there, give or take. They were pretty much bad right off the get-go, everyone. I don't know if I did something wrong, wrong, I, I don't know. Something was wrong, everyone. They pretty much leaked right away. I mean, I put new ones on, and it's like they're leaking. It's like, oh, come on now. Uh, they leaked before that really bad. Put the new ones on it was definitely better but they still leaked so hopefully we just got a new set here where did i put it? there they are uh, i got a new set here today it looks like that's really the only kind they make for this i was looking to see if they made some different ones but i think these are pretty much the same ones i had last time so we're gonna clean it up everyone and see what's what happens for those who wonder we're up to 244,000 miles on the old uh, girl here yep 244,500 miles Getting up there. Ah, uh, yes, everyone, the infamous 10 millimeter socket. I still have one. Okay, man, there she be uh, with the old gasket on her. And looks like I must have put some RTV on it back in the day. So what went wrong of it, I don't know. Looked like it was on there. At least on this side, it was halfway decent. I mean, I had to take the pry bar to get it off. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But we'll clean this up. We'll put new gasket on. Probably put some more RTV on as well. And that is cracked. Well, that might have happened when I took it off too. Oh, that, that gasket. Oh my goodness. That gasket's like just brittle. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, that gasket is... 
Yeah, I guess that's where you get those little cork gaskets. I mean, unfortunately, again, like I said, I, I, don't, I couldn't find like any better type of gasket for this. It seemed like that's all they made. Oh yeah, that was not stuck down very good there, was it? Yeah, well, we'll clean it off and uh, put some more on. Okay, one second uh, valve covers off. That one didn't uh, go too bad either. Just uh, worked my way around, got all the bolts out. Uh, that one did not seem to be like stuck down. That one I would just like pulled off by hand. So got that one off. Also got a little of the gasket material cleaned off already laying up on the bench here. So there it is. Uh, that one, of course, has oil fill and whatever that thing is. I'm not sure what this one has something and that one has something. I don't know what they are, but oh, you know what? Crankcase breather, I think. I think that's what those are anyway uh, i got them off i'll have to get them cleaned up here that's gonna be the next uh, project i'll probably get the pressure washer out and uh, pressure wash them and brake cleaner and all that good stuff i got the bolts uh, sitting here uh, soaking get those all cleaned up hopefully uh, get the motor cleaned up and uh, i'm thinking i'm gonna probably gonna put rtv back on and again that seemed like it adhered fairly well again i don't know why one they just uh yeah new gaskets here like i said i don't know maybe five years ago or so something like that i don't remember exactly when and they were basically they basically didn't work right from the get-go so probably should have replaced them right away or done something right away but oh well anyway we're gonna get these uh cleaned up here as well gotta say one one nice thing about uh, working on this truck hey look at that there's the motor L look at all this i mean look at all this real estate i mean i, mean, I can uh you can fit a body in there if you wanted to probably um you know newfangled vehicles nowadays i mean you basically can't even work on the motor in fact you can't even see the motor on most vehicles nowadays here there's the motor and in most areas, that one, you actually have enough room to work on it. It's kind of nice. So, uh, yeah, we'll get this uh, cleaned up and uh, be ready to put the uh, gaskets and valve covers back on. I think we're good to go here. Ultra copper. Maximum temperature. Maximum copper. Yep. Seeing how the red stuff didn't work. I'm using the... Something different. All righty then. I'm not sure the best way to do this, but I think we're going to put gasket on here. Usually you do so it stays on that. It stays on there, and then we can... Do you have studs? No. Ah. Screws go down through it. Okay. So, yeah. It's upside down. More hands make this job easier. And then the... That's why your parents had kids, right? Right. Makes the jobs easier. So now, this is that now. Passenger side? That is passenger side, yep. So I should probably go RTV that. Okay. You RTV both sides? Yes. Oh, you do? Okay. What does RTV mean? RTV is, uh, I don't know, it's actually, I don't know if this is even considered RTV. It's gasket maker. <laughs> I don't know if I'm able to get in there or not. Deal, I'd like to put it on there, but where do you got to get into? Oh, down in there, yeah, down in there. Huh, you just gotta use your double jointed hands. Oh, wait, that's me. Wonder who's gonna have a job in a minute. I should learn not to talk, John. Yeah, you volunteered. That's what I'm gonna say. I didn't volunteer, I was voluntold.
Oh, that's a good phrase. Yeah. That's how I live my life. <laughs> Get it all over. You're getting your sweet potato mash everywhere. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tastes like caramel flavoring. Tastes like I might die. I mean, we can't really read the warning label anymore, so. Well, then those warnings don't apply. Yeah, it's never had anything important on it anyway. It's so. like all the warning labels that say things are known in the state of California to cause cancer only cause cancer in California. That's why I'm grateful I don't live in California. I know, right? It's so much safer here. Right. Don't live in California, you won't get cancer. <laughs> Them's the rules. Now we just need 20 hands, but none of them can be in the way. Do you need a Megan to hold a light? Oh, if you don't mind, it might be helpful. on that oil. Oh, this one's bad, isn't it? Can't quite go. Let's hold it there. Sitting on the oil dipstick. I seen the, or there's a or trans dipstick. Oh. A dipstick by oh there. Okay. Is your gasket still on? I seen it starting to uh Okay, there's your breather pipe. didn't make too much of a mess. Too bad. Let's see. This one's also a lot lighter to hold. You're better off with RTV in it and calling that good. You can actually, in some cases, I still, bolts. still don't understand what RTV is. Gasket. It's, it's made for gasket sealer. Yeah. Oh, so just stick it on with the goo and not yeah. the bolts? Uh, well, I'll stick it on without the actual. There's another gasket. We got a cork gasket. Oh, the thing that you. We put the RTV on. Then yeah, and then you put gasket. the thing on, and then you yep. put more RTV on. There's yep. your corky thingy. And then you put your RTV gasket on there. Yep. This is supposed to seal everything, and then the RTV gasket seals whatever this doesn't seal, basically. But there's a... It seems like it just adds an extra layer of, hey, things could go wrong with this. Yeah, pretty much. Fills the gaps between your machine surfaces. Well, I mean, that is true. Machines tend to like having their gaps filled. Uh, I need my picker thing. Oh, right there, yep. Okay. What you picking at? Getting that gasket lined up. down in there. Yep. There we go. It's time to get the saws out and just fix it. Saws off. Saws off. Yeah, just get it out of the way. Mm, we'll figure out me. what they do later. 
It's probably nothing important. No. Nah. The engine don't start, then you'll be like, huh, I wonder what that did. Hmm, get or the duct tape. Or the headlights don't turn on or something. Get the electrical tape. Yeah, see? Headlights don't turn on, strap a couple flashlights to the rear view mirrors. Yeah, absolutely. I think they did that on top gear. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something they do. Well, I mean, they fashioned a handbrake out of a log that was strapped to the back of the car and dragged behind it as they drove. It hit a bump and just shot through the back windshield. Ooh. Is the uh, washers there? Is that for the stud? That's for the stud, yeah. Okay, and all of these get that. I got you. There should be two washers for that stud, too. There is. Does it go two washers on top or one top, one bottom? Uh, two washers on top, I believe. Interesting. Certainly clearer. So, John, when we do decide to get a pet, what pet do you think we should get? A cat. And I have lots of you. To Other than pets. your strays. You don't want the stray kitties? They're so nice. They're looking for a home. No, they aren't. Half of them are feral and don't want to be pet. And the other half is Ralphie, and he's a turd. Well, what about giant tarantulas? What? Giant tarantulas. No. No tarantulas? No. Tarantulas are no? Satan's playthings. <laughs> What about a cute puppy that's like the size of a cat? I would be okay with that as long as it was older and not a puppy. I'm not raising another puppy. No puppies. I will happily adopt a dog. Love to adopt a dog, but not a puppy. Hello, Daddy Dozeman. What about a turtle? I thought about that for a while, but they carry salmonella on their shell. Hmm. And they take a lot of equipment to keep healthy. Oh, that is a problem. I know, it's money-wise. Otherwise, I would love a turtle. I'm thinking rat. Like a white one? Oh, probably a spotted one. Huh. You know you love it. <laughs> Come to your house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Would you? Come, what about a mouse? Uh, no. Hamster? Uh, then a cage, maybe. <laughs> what about if it's in one of those little like plastic bowling balls? That's all right. Those little hamster balls. Okay. What about a fox? That would be cool, but they're impossible to house train. Uh, yeah, there's some foxes now. They're like on their what tenth generation. Really? Then just inbred foxes that are considered domestic. Uh, no, like ten generations deep of being domesticated. Oh, yeah. Huh? And then you can have. They can, I think, be had. I know in Michigan you can own a stingray. Ooh, that's tempting. Yeah, I found a pet store that sells freshwater stingrays. Yeah. I didn't even know those were a thing until I saw them there.
What about a lizard? That is like the gecko? Maybe. I've always heard they're nice. Yeah. I'm not really into the bearded dragon ones. They're a little, I don't know, just overdone. <laughs> I love a snake. No. Like a little corn snake? No, I'm not coming to your house. Oh, why not? Snakes are cute. <laughs> Oh, I saw one on our walk the other day. Scared the crap out of my friend. They had a gardener snake in the women's bathroom at Nuvar. Really? When? When was that? Oh, wait. Yeah, that was a while back. No. Wasn't Wednesday it? Wednesday morning. Ooh. Did you save it for me? <laughs> no, I didn't. Kevin threw it out. <laughs> ah, dang it. How big was it? Not very big. No, garter snakes are tiny. Well, we had a... Usually. At, funny, at work, we had like a little baby snake that was about the size of a worm. Oh. And I... The only way you knew it was a snake is you could look at its head. Oh, it wasn't... that's so precious. <laughs> I personally didn't think so, but okay. I like snakes. I used to catch garter snakes in little McDonald's buckets and bring them to my mom and she'd go, no, 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 take them outside. <laughs> <laughs> I think she about had a heart attack when she went to pick up the garden hose. It was a snake. Oh. I know, right? <laughs> so, Randy, can I get a snake? Um, I suppose. That's a good husband right there. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't get a snake. Too much money for stuff to keep it healthy. Plus, where do you find a snake vet? In the garden. Snake vet. Snake vet. Yes. Also, what if it happens to be pregnant? Oh boy. I know, right? I don't know. That and apparently snakes don't have the physical capability of feeling affection. They cannot feel so there's a reason they're stretching out next to you. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I can't remember where I heard it, but a couple of different places I've heard that apparently they don't have the part of their brain that lets them feel love. Oh. So no matter how much you love on them, how much you feed them, they will never love you back. Makes sense. Right? Anyone in the comments, if that's false, feel free to yell at me. No idea. I don't know. I watch way too many documentaries. Who knows if half of them are true? Well, if it's on TV, it has to be right. <laughs> even worse, it's on the internet. Oh, even more right than that one. Right? Even more right. I mean, that is Wikipedia levels of right. That's right. <laughs> you need like a U joint or joint? I'm gonna get it through that. Right there. Yeah, oh, wait. Well, the side. There we go. You can try. Uh, yeah, I got it. Just have to go from the other side. Try to do a shorter extension too, possibly. Victory huzzah? Victory. Okay. If you're tightening down one more time. Yeah, tightening time. Yeah, I don't think we need to go that extreme. No? I mean, okay. Okay, well, I think we're going to call that a job complete. Both valve covers have been replaced. Again, I put that different gasket RTV sealer stuff on it here. I don't know. We'll see if that stuff works any better than the last stuff did. Again, I had the red stuff on it before. This is the uh, copper high heat stuff. I don't know. It just happened to be what I had, so that's what we're going to use. Uh, so, yeah, we're supposed to let this uh, set for 24 hours out, so we'll let it set for 24 hours. Then we'll come back, uh, fire it up, and hopefully... Uh, that will fix at least the majority of the leak. And again, everyone, I'm not exactly sure what percentage of the leak is coming from the oil pan. And unless I pull the motor, everyone, and or, well, pull the motor, uh, we're not going to be fixing the oil pan. So <laughs> a quart of oil, I figure, is uh, cheap uh, rather than having to pull a motor because that seems like a lot of work having to pull a motor just to change an oil pan gasket for, like I said, it, it's about a quart of oil between oil changes that usually leaks out, which, hey, lubricates the underside of the truck. Helps with all the rust and stuff like that. I figure that's, that's cheap insurance, right? So, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe for more. 
And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time.